So this is for the uh, Power of Difference class, the final assignment, uh, the culmination of everything that we've learned. My name is Peter Brooks, and as you can see, I'm at the crossroads of many different things. My life has been, I was born, you know, on the crossroads. And so seeing all of these things that have happened uh, at the intersectionality point that I viewed my conclusion is just that much of what we assume today to be reality is really an illusion. For example, in my life, I've seen people who had everything, money, power, looks, fame, status, physical strength, and they've come to the exact same conclusion as people who had nothing people who were cursed and condemned from birth and just had a bunch of bad luck. Outcomes are pretty much the same. And that led me to believe that many of the things that we had been told about the way to live our lives are simply not true. I've seen people with nothing be happier than people with everything. But in the end, they all reach the same conclusion. And so, by the same token, the idea that people are different from one another because of the circumstantial evidence of where they appeared on Earth at that particular time, and that makes them somehow different from other human beings, is really an illusion. Um, the idea that we are supposed to live apart from each other and yet rule nature is yet another illusion. The fact that people present themselves as one way and live another is an illusion. I present myself as a mixed blood person. That's what I am. I had no control over that. But I live my life and identify as a Native American. I chose that, but you wouldn't know that just by looking at me. So it's kind of an illusion because... If you treat me like a mixed person or if you believe I'm of one race or another, um, in the end, that was an illusion. And if you treat me like a Native American, it's also an illusion because I may present in a totally different way. So when she, uh, Physicians, uh, a movie I saw, My Uncle from America by Alan Rene, it featured an interview with a doctor named Henry Laverite. And Labyrinth indicated that there were four primary actions that human beings are involved in. And they're consistent of all species, pretty much. Consumption or just existing, copulation or reproductive nurturing, fight or refusal to comply with something, and flight or escape. And I think this perspective, while scientific and valid and all that stuff, leaves out the human capability to contribute and to create. And the question I ask is, can we leave nature, can we leave the Mother Earth better off as a result of our presence? And we certainly, I don't believe, can do that. We cannot support our seventh generation to come if we are obsessed with difference at the expense of similarity. I know this idea of, you know, one race is seen as negative, but I think that argument has very little structure to it. And so that's why I embrace the oneness. I believe if we continue down this road of difference and privilege based on difference, I think we threaten our very existence because it's inevitable that those who have been wronged because of the way that they present themselves with no control of themselves will demand justice. They have to. So this is the question, I think, that we ultimately have to answer. And that is, what type of human beings are we? Are we, in fact, human beings if we ignore the suffering of others? And so that's where I leave you is I think the most important question you have to answer is how will you resolve the suffering that you see other people going through, especially 
when you're not going through it may have caused it and or contributed to it and uh, you're not experiencing it you know what type of human are you to allow that to continue you know I look at the African American people here brought all the way from around the world worked as slaves for hundreds of years and then left on the streets to die in poverty after their slavery work was over and so I question what type of human beings are we to do that to one another?